Hi, good morning, everyone. So my name is Mohan Kalkunte. Uh, I've been with Broadcom for a long time now. Uh, my co-presenter, Hugh Holbrook, uh, could not be here because of uh, personal reasons. So uh, I'm going to do the best I can to cover his part as well. So today, uh, I'm really excited to talk about uh, you know, the next frontier in uh, AI networking, and that is scale-up Ethernet, uh, or SUE for short. Um, in fact, scale-up Ethernet is already being deployed. We have a number of deployments out there that are doing uh, scale-up Ethernet. But one common thing that we find is that almost every implementation is slightly different. You know, every one has, seems to have their own transport, uh, different optimizations, different workloads, and so on. And, but one common underlying theme across all of that stuff is Ethernet. So what we want to do today is talk a little bit about both aspects, the, uh, the transport side of the things, as well as the networking portion, and that is scale-up uh, Ethernet. Now, when you think of uh, AI networking, right, uh, there is obviously the scale-up, and then there is scale-out, right? So you heard, I'm sure you have heard many talks about scale-out. Um, you know, here's where you connect multiple racks together. Typically, a uh, leaf-spine kind of uh, topology. Uh, what used to be, uh, let's say, a few thousands of uh, these XPUs or GPUs interconnected. Now, today we see, you might have seen some of the presentations out there spanning even like 128K XPUs or GPUs in a single building. And then you have heard about scale across, where you take these multiple clusters, multiple data centers, and you interconnect them to even connect a much larger cluster, like almost like a million GPUs. So you hear all of these things. And the thing that's um, common here is Ethernet, right? So Ethernet is the prevalent uh, technology in the scale out. Now, coming back to uh, scale up. So scale up is where you have uh, multiple XPUs, typically you know, tens, maybe hundreds, where you would interconnect them in a, what we call as a high bandwidth domain. Uh, basically, very high bandwidth I.O. coming from these XPUs that you want to interconnect so that you can enable this memory sharing across all of these GPUs or XPUs so that it acts as one gigantic XPU with unified memory. And SUE uh, is what tries to bring that out into the open. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, within uh, uh, you know the one of the things that we notice is that the you need very high bandwidth, and why is that? If you look, uh, a modern XPU will typically have multiple HBMs. So in this example, I show four and eight, and they have multiple HBMs. Uh, sorry, eight eight HBMs as an example here, and. Each HBM is about 10, 12 terabits. So if you look at it, it's of the order of 100 terabits of memory bandwidth. Now imagine that you need uh, an XPU. Since you want to have this entire thing act as one gigantic memory, what that means is any XPU should be able to access the memory across uh, you know, an uh, HBM that is connected to another XPU. So what that means is that you will have to have very high bandwidth, uh, interconnect bandwidth. And the second thing is not only that it has to be high bandwidth, it also has to be what we call as efficient data transfer uh, and reliable transfer. So it has to be low latency, not only low latency, low latency, but also deterministic jitter. And and if there is any loss of packet due to, let's say, soft errors or something like that, how fast you can recover uh, 
and efficiently as well. Now, you might have seen this in a couple of other presentations, but uh, scale up. So when I, think, when I talk about scale up, I would like to think about it as two major functions. One is what goes on the XPU or the GPU endpoint, and the other one is the networking portion. So on the top is the transport portion, and on the bottom is the network portion. So the network portion is typically you know, uh, the Ethernet headers, the framing, the link and MAC layer, and the Ethernet file layer, right? So, and this is a new work stream that was established that's called eSUN, uh, Ethernet Scale-Up for Networking. And typically, you know, at a very high level, some of the features that you can think of in this layer is like link level, retry, thread-based flow control, optimized headers, and so on. Now, up on the top is what I call as the transport uh, side or the XPU functionality. And this is transport over Ethernet. And the idea here is that you, know, you execute at your own pace. So every accelerator that we have come across, they, ha they have something slightly different. Uh, the workloads are different. The optimization points are different. So, and, and for them to have one rigid stack is kind of almost you know, impossible because they already have deployments today. And they want to see how they can evolve at their own pace. So by decoupling this transport from the networking part, that's what that allows. And SUE transport is one instance of it, uh, one example um, you know, way of doing transport. So now let's dig a little bit deeper into the SUE transport. Now think of SUE transport as a menu of design choices, right? So for instance, um, what should the core side interface be? How will it interface to the XPU? Would that be an AXE4 interface, or would that be a signal side interface? Uh, what kind of memory access uh, you need to have? Is, it, is the data being pushed, or are you, are you pulling uh, you know, uh, data from the, from the memory? Uh, transaction packing policy. So this is a cool thing here. So if you have, it depends on your transaction sizes. If you have transaction sizes that are pretty small, maybe you want to pack them, right? Uh, so what, is, what kind of policies that you need to have there? Reliability. Whether hop by hop reliability is sufficient or do you need reliability at the transport layer? So, um, so this, that's another consideration. Memory ordering model, um, ordering within the threads, across the threads, how is that handled? Uh, what kind of congestion control? Uh, what kind of congestion control approach? What I, I talked about the transaction sizes. Encryption. There are some vendors who would like to have uh, encryption, or accelerator uh, developers, they would like to have encryption. Another thing that I have not mentioned is uh, resiliency. How is resiliency handled? If a link, flays, link fails, how is that handled? Load balancing. Is that something that needs to be handled at this layer, or is that something that needs to be handled at the upper layer, right? Um, scheduling disciplines, um, you know, class of service. So, so there are a number of design choices that you have, and it's almost impossible to state that you know, these are all the must-have requirements because it really depends on the accelerator developer um, you know, as to what choice, uh, as to what they would like to uh, choose. So, going, so looking at the, some of the focus here, right? So I mentioned that you know, bandwidth, uh, you need very high bandwidth. And um, typically the bandwidth is like eight to 12x that of the scale out. And what that means is that existing implementations like RDMA NICs, right, they are too large to integrate. Now, keep in mind, this functionality is going on the XPU side, and you want very high I.O. bandwidth. So therefore, the area and power requirements for each of these instances has to be very small. And the more functionality that you add, 
higher the area, higher the power, and therefore your, you know, your compute performance, the number of transistors or what you can allocate for compute will go down, right? Uh, second is memory, memory semantics, right? Uh, mapping, directly mapping read, writes, and atomics onto the Ethernet packets. Uh, topology, what kind of topology? Uh, a single tier topology where you can support you know, hundreds of XPUs, then you go to thousands of uh, XPUs, and typically today, the scale-up domain has been within a rack. Uh, that's primarily because you want to keep the connectivity to, to copper and uh, low cost. But increasingly, we are seeing that the scale-up domain going up. And what that means is that you have to go across multiple racks. And with innovations in low cost optics, that's, that becomes feasible going forward. So these are the, some of the considerations and the focus areas in the Sioux transport. So now let me give you a couple of examples that are there in the Sioux specification or the SUE specification. One is the transaction packing. The idea here is pretty simple. Uh, let's say you have number of transactions, uh, transactions going from XPU A to XPU B. And what you do is if you have the same, uh, if you have, let's say, two or three transactions going to the same, uh, same destination XPU, then you opportunistically pack them. So you pack these transactions, you put a, whatever the header on top of it. So this way what happens is that you're amortizing your overhead over multiple transactions. Again, it is work conserving. That means that you're not waiting to say, okay, let the transactions come, let me pack, and then send it out. As you're scheduling these queues, if there's one, there's two, there's three, however number of transactions, you pack them and you send it out. Um, so that's, that's one example. Um, another example is reliability. And this is optional, again, whether you want reliability at the transport layer or not. Now, if you believe that the topology is pretty robust, uh, there is no loss, um, and then, uh, you know, uh, then there is no need for this reliability. But some, you know, some uh, vendors or accelerator developers are, considered, are, are concerned about soft errors, and which happens to be very rare, right? So if you have s something like that, then you can have some kind of a retransmission logic at this layer. But this does not have to be a heavy-duty retransmission logic that you see in TCP or RDMA. It can be a very lightweight. It can be a go-back-n type of uh, retransmission logic uh, kind of an approach. And as I mentioned before, uh, this is optional. So a couple of uh, deployment examples. Uh, here on the left, uh, both are 128 uh, XPU nodes here. Um, in this example, the, each GPU I.O. is like 3.2T, max port speed is 400 gig, and with a 51T kind of a switch, like for instance Tomahawk 5, uh, you put eight of those switches so it is a single hop, multi-plane type of an approach. You can double the bandwidth, that on the right side, with, uh, you know, uh, with a Tomahawk 6, so same same number of uh, XPU nodes, but basically doubling the I.O. bandwidth from each of those XPUs. So the SUE has been broken up into two pieces. One is what we call as the SUE transport, and the second one is the ESAN. So you heard about ESAN. SUE transport is an established work stream co-chaired with uh, Arista. Uh, ESAN will be the uh, upstream, uh, upcoming work stream, so you have a number of companies supporting that. So here's a call to action. So Broadcom seeded the uh, SUE transport with the initial specification, so we welcome uh, participation in this uh, open work stream. Um, and, uh, and SUE, uh, sorry, Scale Up Ethernet is here. It's ready. It's open. So we invite everyone to join in this journey to make the um, make uh, you know Ethernet as a choice for memory, compute, and fabric as one unified system. Uh, thank you. <laughs>